Hey guys, it's Randy and it is June 20, another great Saturday morning to be out here doing a bunch of habitat work. You know, tomorrow's the uh, first day of summer. It's the longest day of the year. It is really getting light early and so I've been trying to get up early to get as much work done as we can, taking advantage of uh, all this daylight. But um, what we're going to do today is we're going to be hinge cutting a bunch of trees around the perimeter of this food plot. Um, on the west side of the food plot here, I hinge cut a bunch of trees. And if you can see, we'll go take a look here closer in a second, but we've got a couple of maples and a couple of oaks that I dropped down into the food plot. And some of those branches has just been literally stripped clean. I've got a, a little plot watcher here behind me right over there. And uh, we'll kind of check and see what kind of activity we got on that too. Um, so I'm gonna be hinge cutting today. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I got a couple of um, 55 gallon plastic drums that I cut in half from top to bottom with a sawzaw. And I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna countersink those into the ground in strategic spots be between where I think the deer are bedding and on their way to food and then possibly by, you know, some of our, uh, our blinds, tree stands, that type of thing. So just trying to create, you know, a deer pattern uh, water is very important and there's no other water on this property and you know if I don't put any water holes in uh, the deer are going to go somewhere to get the water and it's really not going to create uh, a predictable deer pattern where you know they're going to get up out of bed they're going to go water they're going to go eat you know that type of thing uh, if they got to get water somewhere else it's going to throw a wrench into everything so I've got to make sure I have water on this property so you know Think about your property. If you don't have any water at all, man, you've got to countersink some, some barrels or, or something to uh, create that predictable deer movement. So I'm uh, kind of disappointed in the buckwheat. It's not coming up very well, but um, you know, I, the spots where the rain had washed it away, it's growing great. But I think uh, they must've had some pretty bad rains over here because it's, um, it's, it's totally bare in some spots and other spots it's uh, quite a bit of buckwheat. So Anyway, maybe I'll just throw some more down yet. We'll see. We do have some rain coming this weekend. So anyway, let's go take a closer look at some of these trees that the deer stripped uh, off the tops of these maples and oaks. So here's the first maple right here. And you can see that this one has just been stripped totally clean. This is a branch right here that it's only got a few down here, but this has been stripped clean. This one's been stripped clean. We've got another branch right here. Uh, we've got one right here. It's only got a few left on the end. So they've been in here uh, pretty good. And um, we'll go take a look at this oak behind me. So check out this oak. This thing has really been stripped. Uh, I would say that they prefer this one over the maple, that's for sure, because this one was covered with leaves and this thing has just been annihilated. I mean, they have come in here and just totally stripped it. They're even eating some of the uh, branches right off there. And uh, man, even on the top of the the tree right here too is just totally stripped clean and there's a lot more deer tracks around this tree than there is that maple over there. So uh, kind of a learning experience, you know, that boy, they really like these oaks. I would have thought they would have been all over that maple more than the oak, but uh, that's evidently not the case. So we've got a lot more, you know, trees that we hinge cut up in here. And, you know, just think about the fact that if the deer have all this natural vegetation in June to eat, they're still eating this woody browse and these leaves. So, you know, just think of what kind of benefit trees like this is gonna have when they're at the deer level during the winter time. I mean, just think of the food that you're gonna provide for the deer. So I had my plot watcher out there for about seven days and I just picked one of them that uh, had some pretty good deer activity. And I have the plot watcher set so that it records the first four hours of daylight and the last four hours of daylight. So this would be the first half of the day You've probably seen a couple deer uh, streak by already, but uh, now we're into the uh, last four hours of the day. And uh, as you can see, we're, I got it going at a pretty fast speed right now, but as the deer show up, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. So here's the first deer, and you can see he's over on the other side of the food plot where all the clover is. And then we got three more that show up, and they're also over in the other part where there's uh, clover, because the buckwheat on this side is not coming in very well. Then we have four more deer coming in. I got seven out there now. And if you see to the extreme left side of the screen, there's a little bush there, but uh, there's always a deer that keeps popping in and out of the picture. 
you can see the dark body coming in and out once in a while and he's right in the middle of those hinge cuts and then every once in a while a deer from the field's got to walk over there and, and grab a couple nibbles off that oak tree as well and then uh, we've got the pine or we got the maple tree in the foreground and every once in a while a deer will come over and nibble on that thing as well so um, we've got the we've got a, about four bucks out there and here's one right here I kind of freeze framed it and, uh, he's at least two and a half years old and he grabbed some uh, nibbles off that uh, maple tree and then we got a little younger one and he comes over and checks that one out as well so you know we had seven deer out on a food plot um, at one time and I know four of them for sure are bucks so here we got another one coming out of the hinge cuts and so as uh, as the day winds down uh, we got this uh, lone doe got a quick run out here and grab a couple bites to eat before everybody leaves so anyway just thought you might uh, be interested in seeing that so I'm hinge cutting here on the north side of this little food plot and I came across something interesting that I wanted to share with you so I'm going to swing around here a second I want to show you what I found but um, you can see right back there is a two-man ladder stand that is in a poplar tree and we've got oaks around here we've got maples you know the oaks um, they hang on to their leaves a lot longer but a uh, poplar and aspen tree they drop their leaves like I mean toward the end of September beginning of October and then you have no back cover but they uh, they chose this tree to hang or to uh, place a two-man ladder stand and it's really low and it's right on the edge of a food plot and it's just uh, probably one of the reasons why you know another reason why these guys weren't seeing deer and ended up selling the property um, anything that I feel is going to be comfortable for the hunter um, advantageous for the hunter convenient for the hunter is probably not a good idea for the deer as far as making the deer feel comfortable so I just wanted to show this to you so that when you go and choose your stand placements that you really think twice about putting your stands right on the edge of a food plot because you want to see deer and in a tree that loses its leaves early in the season. So I just want to show you what we did today around the edge of the food plot as far as doing any hinge cutting. Uh, I'm in the food plot here on the south edge and I'm looking at the two track that leads into it. And you can see I just dropped a bunch of trees uh, randomly along the edge of this food plot. Uh, dropped maples, white oaks, red oaks, poplars, uh, whatever was in the way, uh, even some pine trees. So just just made a mess all the way around this food plot and so the deer are going to have a lot to browse on even when they get into the food plot and it really cut down the sight line and so then uh, we have the bedding up there uphill there and then right here we have a travel corridor that leads from the bedding areas and comes down into this food plot and I, I made that a lot thicker along the edge uh, of that travel corridor so they feel a little bit more safe and so uh, I think that's going to work out pretty good so now that we've got that done, it's uh, about time for lunch. Okay, now before I go and uh, sink a couple of uh, barrels for some water holes, just wanted to show you a little bit here on the uh, northern edge of this food plot. We uh, made a big mess here. Uh, deer are going to have a lot to browse on and uh, just going to make uh, them feel a lot more secure. And then off in the distance there, as we go uphill, I'm going to do a bunch of hinge cutting there probably next week and really thicken that up as well. And so uh, we're going to uh, head over here and uh, see if we can find a good spot for a water hole. Now, this is a um, two-track that comes down from the bedding areas, and I did plant some buckwheat in here, but it looks like a lot of it got washed away. But um, what I want to do is uh, I want to countersink a barrel that comes out of bedding and then on the way to this trail that leads to the food plot. So I'm trying to create some deer movement that's going to be advantageous for, you know, some predictability. And so 
we've got um, we've got some bedding that goes right up in here. You can see we've got the food plot right there. Uphill here is where we got some buck beds and some doe beds. And coming right down out of the edge of that is where I want to put a uh, water hole. And it's going to lead right down to this trail and then into the food plot. So let's go check that all up in there. So I just got done digging the hole for the half a barrel. And uh, I've uh, got it uh, pretty good here. I think it's pretty close to what I need. But um, I did encounter a couple of roots. And so one thing you're going to want to take with you when you dig out these holes you're going to want to take some sort of uh, uh, tree saw because I got a root in here that um, it's not going to allow it's not going to allow that barrel to, to get counter sunk in there and so got another one here and so now I got uh, I think there's nothing in the way might have to cut this one a little bit right here get that out of there just kind of run my fingers through there, see if I feel any more roots. Got one right there. So now I can basically dig that hole so it's kind of concave like the barrel. And uh, I kind of want to get that barrel uh, countersunk so that uh, when we get a really hard rain, which I call a gully washer, that water will just come running down the hill, fill up that barrel, and then uh, keep moving. Let me uh, get a little bit more dirt out of here in the center. And I always like to throw my dirt downhill. I don't want to throw my dirt uphill because then it's going to, it's nice loose dirt and it's going to wash into the barrel. So always throw the dirt downhill. I think this probably ought to be pretty close to getting this barrel counter sunk. Let's see what we got. Okay, it looks like the looks like the hole is not quite wide enough, so I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna just trim this out a little bit. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, that's what I like to see. Um, I like to see this edge on the uphill side kind of flush with that barrel. And I really don't care if this side is higher than that side. Because what I'm concerned about is I want the water to be able to come through, run downhill, fill up the barrel, and anything that spills out once the barrel's full can go downhill. And that's fine. So what I'm going to do now though, very carefully, is I'm going to take some of this loose dirt and I'm just going to fill around the outside edge. And um, that way, you know, I know some of that water is going to seep down in there, uh, into that backfill area. But, uh, you know, if we get a hard enough rain, it'll still, it'll still wash into the barrel. So, and then the other thing this will do is uh, this backfill dirt will hold that barrel in place as well. Over time, there's going to get dirt and leaves and sticks and algae and all that stuff in that barrel, and which is perfectly fine because you know deer ain't drinking nice clean water uh, anyway. Just one thing to remember: the kind of water that deer like is basically air temperature water. You know, yeah, it might sound good to us to have nice, cold, clear, crisp water coming from a, a nice spring, you know. But uh, that's not necessarily what deer are craving. They just got to have water, and they almost prefer it to be air temperature. And a lot of times that water that you see them drinking is just plain nasty. That water can be full of algae and green and critters and... They don't care. All right, that's pretty much it. I got it cleaned out. It's in there nice and tight. The water should be able to run right downhill on a real good hard rain. And uh, it's all gonna pool right in the middle, right where it's uh, the deepest part. And because it's not gonna be spread out across a whole bottom of a barrel, which is level, 
you know, it's not going to evaporate because there's not as much surface area exposed to the air because you got more depth instead of width. So that's the idea behind it. It's high noon right now, so the sun is about straight up. And so this spot is sunny, but uh, here in about maybe half hour or an hour, this will be in the shade again. So it's only going to be in the shade, or it's only going to be in the sun for about an hour. And uh, it should stay, uh, should get less evaporation that way. So anyway, that's the first water hole. I've got one more to do, and I think we're going to put that one right on the other side of this bedding. So let's go check that out. So one last thing you're going to want to do before uh, you leave is you're going to want to put in what we call a critter stick. And uh, this is, the only purpose of this is to allow any little animal like a mouse or something like that to uh, be able to get out if he falls in. This stuff is very, very slippery and sometimes they can't get out. So we don't want them to drown and contaminate the water and then that will turn uh, the deer off and drinking the water with a dead animal in there. So we put in a little critter stick so they can crawl up the stick and then get out that way and so it works very well so now that I got the water barrel counter sunk right over here to my left um, that's all the time I had today I looked down at my watch and uh, we running out of time here real quick today so next week we're gonna come back and we're gonna hinge cut this uh, this hill here on the uh, northern part and um, I'm gonna have a pit blind up on top of that hill and I want to be able to hinge cut this really low so the deer don't bed and then I'll be able to shoot over it and um, really make this a really nice travel corridor leading out into the food plot. So that's going to be the goal for next week and uh, we will see you then.